G'day everyone, my name's Will and welcome to the August 2022 edition of Australian Model Railway News. We'll take a look at all the updates and announcements in the model railway industry as well as exhibition news. Australian Model Railway News and other videos on the channel are made possible with the support from the patrons on Patreon. And if you'd like to join the community, there's a link in the description below where you can support the channel from as little as a dollar a month and unlock things like early access to videos. Also, welcome aboard to the Scout Model Supply, who now offer an affiliate link for viewers of this channel. So if you'd like to support this great Australian company, whilst also supporting production of videos on this channel, use the code WILLJAMESRAILWAY at checkout and get 10% off all orders. And ABR Model Works, where viewers of Australian Model Railway News can receive a 10% discount with the code AMRN22 at checkout. And of course, if you are new here, don't forget to be subscribed so you can keep up to date with all the videos that I've got coming out soon. Now, to get into this month's news, we're going to start with Broad Gauge Models. Brian at Broad Gauge Models has given us a bit of an update, saying with steam locomotives of Victorian Railways prototype now soon to come out of China, they will be doing a slight change in direction in that they will be manufacturing brass white metal kits here in Australia. To start, they will not be going into the D3, but will concentrate on the DD, with both versions of the D1 and the D2. AA, original Y, old R, how far down the alphabet they go into early Victorian railways locomotives. V, B, W, both versions of the E, D, P, K, A2, and then possibly others. As research and design time permits, they will advertise which ones they will be manufacturing. They do believe that there is a market out there for older Victorian railways locomotives. So instead of trying to compete with the current ready to run products, they'll be going down a slightly different track and still produce their ready to run kits in brass and white metal. They do also believe that these locomotives will be slightly easier to build as most of them have very simple valve gear. For all their South Australian customers, they have already announced their intention to do a 620 class and design work is underway thanks to many people in South Australia able to supply vital information and drawings for this locomotive. What they do after that for South Australia is undecided, but a rerun T or even possibly a TX if there is enough interest. P and S class locomotives are also a possibility. Then there is the 600, 720, and if they're game enough, even the 520, but they say that's a long way off. They will still have a range of accessory items on brass etch, along with solder and flux. They've also said that they will soon have a starter brass and white metal kit, a KQ, soon to be released and a soon to be released four wheel wagon as another starter kit. Brian also added many thanks to all of those who have supported them over the last 30 years. News from SDS Models and Phoenix Reproductions. In an update on the SDS website, we now have a photo of the LLW or NWLA well wagons complete with a static Series 1 X200 locomotive. Now they've said that they won't be releasing an X200, but it will have track to fit an IDR Models X200. They've also said that the Cave Hill Express set 75, Masonite sheeted EP cars and Greyhound cars are still set to arrive in the first quarter of 2023. They've also added Victorian Railways IZ and RY wagons. The IZ with buffers, riveted RYs and welded RYs have also appeared on their website, along with Victorian Railways ELF, ELX and ESX open wagons. These wagons are a new tool and the ELX type are reworked Austrains models. With some more updates from the Caulfield exhibition, we did get to see samples of the Victorian Railways K classes in Primer. Both Boxpock and Spoked Wheels were on show. They said that they are still testing the latest versions to test the running of the locomotives, just to make sure that the details are all correct. Also being told that there will be an SOC rerun, which is about to be sent out as well as the Australian National Steel Wagon models. We did also get to see the blue Freight Rail 81s, which I was told are on the water, along with the Bicentennial 81 class locomotives. It was also reported more Candy 81s are on the way in about four to six weeks. As well as that, in that shipment, there is also another rerun of the Victorian Railways D3 class locomotives. They also added that the 81 class in Pacific National will be available later this year. And with that, the Victorian Railways T classes will be coming after the 81 class production has finished. 
They also had a wooden VHO van on display, which was looking very nice with its various body colours. The South Australian Railways 900 class samples were also there, as well as a running sample. Now these are reportedly on the way, and they are currently being painted and will be here later this year. Although there was a sound sample at the exhibition, it was not fitted with the final sound files that will be released. There was also an unannounced little teaser sitting on the table, a Westrail K-Class cab. Although no details as yet, the Westrail K-Class is a standard gauge loco, so it will only be available in HO scale. And lastly, SDS added that the POC Queensland Railways container wagons have now sold out in 12mm. Can Do Workshops have given us an update on the CGAY hopper wagons. These are HO scale 3D printed models of the 100 ton CGAY grain hoppers purchased by CFCLA. And they have shared with us photos of the test prints as well as some painted samples. They are now available for pre-order on their website. Can Do have said that this will be a multi-piece kit. The chassis with the most detail will all be done in one piece. And the roof, sides and ends will also be a single piece. You will also receive a stencil for masking out the silver arc on the side, as well as some minor detail parts. Decals are soon to be available separately. If you do purchase one, you will have to supply your own choice of bogies, couplers, paint, glue, and a little modeling skill. Oz and Rail, who have been quiet for some time, are planning on releasing Victorian Railways O-Wagons as a single piece 3D print. They have released photos of a finished production O-Wagon, as well as a batch of four straight off a printer. Oz and Rail have said that these are expected to retail at $33, including couplers, micro trains, wheels, and decals. Rail Motor Models have received ready to run soda ash and phosphate wagons. They've said that due to overwhelming demand, they've started production on the Freight Australia and Freight Victoria quarry wagons. Also, another production run, the Victorian Railways and V Line ready to run quarry wagons, will be due in September or October of this year. They also have a sample of their double end Tate car kit, which was on display at the Caulfield exhibition. Samples of the VZMF ballast ready to run wagons are currently being assembled for final production. Production is tentatively slated for September or October, with delivery due in February or March. Hi modelers, it's Chris here, the modeler at ABR Model Works. And in this short video, I'll bring you up to date with what we've been doing for the last couple of months. But first I apologize for not sharing news about what we've been doing on a regular basis. This winter I've managed to get the trifecta when it comes to the flus. I had the flu, man flu variety, the worst there is, coupled with pneumonia when I tripped to hospital, and of course the trifecta itself, COVID. So it's been an interesting few months. Having said that, I haven't stopped, and we have a range of new products that are coming on stream pretty much as we speak. Slim's Warehouse is a kit that will be available fairly soon. We're just finishing off the video for it and the instructions. So it's a flat. Our two-stall maintenance facility that uh, has the roof lift off so that you can have lots of details inside, etc. A range of new 3D parts that have been developed for these particular kits. And I did a video a few weeks ago entitled As One Thing Leads to Another. And as I was building the Slim's Warehouse, or starting to build rather, the Slim's Warehouse diorama, I realized that you know I needed something a little better than just a, a straight angle. And so I ended up developing a diorama series. So they'll come in various sizes um, with and without a, uh, a backdrop. And uh, from uh, 150 mil square uh, going up to um, around 450 mil wide. So stay tuned for those. Now, in addition to our dioramas, I've also been working on a series of baseboards for model rollaway layouts. And this is a 300 by 300 mil example of what we're looking at. Um, it is made of MDF, it comes flat pack, uh, and uh, you just clip it together, a little bit of glue, and the whole process just simply goes together very easily. It has uh, holes already pre-placed so that you can bolt them together as modules. Uh, currently, we are looking at producing 300 by 300 
300 by 600 and 600 by 450. And the idea is, is that you bolt them together to make up the baseboard for whatever size that you need. Now, part of the reason for doing this is that these days there are a number of factors at play that are making the model railway scene a little bit more difficult for a few people. Namely, a lot of people are living in much smaller locations and don't have the space, so space is a big issue, and it is for us. So my layout is going to be made using these. And because of space, a lot of people don't have the facility to start cutting up large pieces of timber and board to produce a, a baseboard. And so for that reason, some of the people are choosing not to go down the path of model railroading as a hobby and choose a different hobby. So I'm hoping this will help part of that scene as well. So I'm still in the design phase on this particular product, but I'm hoping that in about a month's time we'll have it ready. Um, I've also been in discussions with Bart from Dubai Trains, and he's also looking to build his new layout that he'll be starting in about a month's time using this system as well. So we're both talking about it. If you're concerned about the strength of the product, last night whilst talking with Bart, I put two of them on the ground and uh, placed this one across and made a bridge and stood in the middle of it. Uh, and uh, it held my 91 kilograms without any problems at all. So strength-wise, it's very, very good. The system will be designed to either allow you to fit legs to it or place it on... Uh, some open bench work. So more on this particular product perhaps at the end of uh, next month when the next uh, news update is done. As always when we're developing a new kit we're also developing a range of 3D parts and other things to go with it and for the two stall maintenance facility we've come up with a laser cut door complete with uh, boards and bolt holes etc and to complement the doors there's a set of hinges that allow you to have the doors in various open uh, positions. These hinges are in two pieces and you can glue one piece to the door and one piece to the wall or you can glue them together with the particular angle that you're looking for. There's a stacked set of 44 gallon drums, some crates stacked that would go up against a flat, um, a window with a door in it uh, a window that has a fan built in, the uh, gutters that we're using on the maintenance facility and the end caps, the uh, vents for the roof, and a smaller version of our corrugated awnings that go above a single doorway. And last of all, we've come up with a buffer stop. The buffer stop has been designed so that it will go on any HO scale uh, rail, doesn't matter what uh, rail height that you're using. So all of these 3D parts will come available on the website in the coming weeks, uh, along with the kits and the uh, diorama bases. Uh, over the last few weeks, there's been a number of little videos go up on the building of these particular kits and uh, items, etc. So please check out the channel and uh, have a look at those. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to Will's channel. Um, he does a wonderful job promoting the hobby in Australia. So that's it for this update. As I said, it would be short. Have a great day modelling. I'm Chris, the modeller at ABR Model Works. And thanks for watching. Steam Mirror Models at the Caulfield Exhibition had the I and IA wagon kits available. They did have this to say about them. The new kits have finer detail on the outside and now include all exterior detail, including the way the doors stepped out from the sides. A small panel of etched brass is now included in each kit, which includes brake rigging, handbrake, handrails and shunter steps. Wire and a jig is also included in each kit for separate uncoupling levers. They've said to take notice that the IY has lashing rings on the ends, whereas the IA doesn't, as per the prototype. The lashing rings and the support brackets are molded hanging below the headstocks of both kits. Because the kits use the same body tooling, the only difference is the side sills with W irons, springs and axle boxes. For an IIA, the lashing rings are simply trimmed off and discarded or thrown in a bits box. For the IY, the parts are trimmed off and relocated to positions either side of the end staunchions.
The retail price of each kit is now $21. They also released a photo of one of the new 1620 cordless motors installed in one of their X-Class locomotives. They also have a small number of packs of additional castings to allow a model to be built with a round top firebox, which can be as built or post modified front end. Simple Signals 2 from Simplified Electronic Control for your model railways, also known as DrMo.net. Simple Signal 2 is an electronic controller that will control the signals as trains pass through sections of track. Just like the prototype, it protects the sections of track from another train entering. Simple Signal 2 has five user-defined modes from simple timers to more complex signaling options. For more information on Simple Signals 2, just head over to drmo.net. Wombat Models have asked me to tell you that it seems that there are some people out there who are stating that Wombat Models are out of business or has nil stock of the C30T Loco. Wombat Models have said that the C30T Locos that they have no stock of a 3001, 3011 and 3016 with three of each. There are however low stock for 3089, 3090 and 3142, but the rest of the locos they still have adequate stock in hand. Now they've said that they've only had a few replies for the expression of interest for the colored C30T series of locos, so there will not be enough to warrant a production run. Unless they receive a lot more interest in them soon, they will not be made. DCC Sound released an upgraded new speaker designed specifically for the SDS model's VR D3 class steam locomotive. For installation, the two factory speakers are removed and the two new speakers simply slide in to take the place of the old speakers. The speaker wires are then connected directly to the decoder. These are available on their website for $30. It should be noted that these do not fit in the flare top tenders. IDR models have given us a few new updates, starting with the W class. They've received a shipment of ESU V5 sound decoders. The W classes are now available in DCC and DCC with sound. All the models are supplied with running numbers already pre-programmed and they will be available for sale on their website and in stores by the end of the month. The CHS coal hoppers are in production and production samples will be here by next month. The Derm and MT trailer car production is now finished and the models will be shipped as soon as they're out of the factory. They have received production samples and they are very happy with the finished product. The pre-orders will be open till just after the Caulfield show, which they were in attendance. They also had an unannounced livery, the V-Line Derm. This was on display at the IDR stand at the Caulfield exhibition. And they reckon they should have at least some interest and they certainly have mine. I reckon it looks awesome. And they're only going to be producing a limited number. Also at the IDR display at Caulfield, they also had some samples of the Southern Rail models, explorers and container flats, which I've been told will now be available in 2023. On track models have said that painting and assembly of the Victorian Railway's 40 and 52 foot louver vans has commenced at the factory. At this stage, they should be arriving around November and as such, they will be opening pre-orders on October 1st. An engineering brief has been submitted to the factory for a new New South Wales wagon and a new Victorian wagon. Tooling for their next Victorian wagon has been delayed in their factory due to supply issues and contractor issues, but they are expecting new samples by the end of the year. Anton's Trains and Scale Model Co Hobby Center have released a statement saying Anton from Anton's Trains is retiring, but Scale Model Co are pleased to announce that they have acquired the Anton's Trains business, 
which includes the unique model productions, Oz kits, Oz controllers, and Anton's turntables and accessories. Products are now available in store and online, and they will continue to manufacture the full range and also look forward to adding to it. They've said that there is close to 250 products in the range, catering for the needs of all HO modelers, and of course, particularly Australian modelers. All products are available on the scalemodelco.com.au website at the, or for purchase at their shop in Thornley, New South Wales. A quick one from Powerline, they have adjusted the road numbers of the T-Class rerun, now with T359 and T364 in Victorian Railways, and T361 and 362 in V-Line, with order forms now available. Ascision have released photos of the tooling samples for the upcoming Harris sets which are looking excellent. And it is to be noted that these models will have motors in their bogies, which is something very interesting. As well as those models, we also saw at the Caulfield exhibition a few others in the display cabinet. Those being the C-Class pre-production models, G-Class pre-production models. We also saw samples of the upcoming flexi vans, some more samples of the upcoming Overland sets and power cars. There was also N-Scale NR80, and 442 class locomotives on display and running around the table. Although with all these models on display at Caulfield, there was no update on any releases. Ascision also now has painted samples of the HO scale CHS coal hoppers and BGVF grain hoppers. They've said that these hoppers pre-orders will end soon. So if you want to save yourself 50 bucks a pack, they advise getting your orders in now as these models will go into production in September and the delivery date will be updated once they've left the factory. And lastly from Ascision, a V-Line H set photo was circulating around a few Facebook groups. However, Ascision have come out and said that this is not real and was a Photoshop by someone online. Traction scale models have released a brand new Sydney R1 class tram kit in HO scale. They've said that they've only got an initial run of five model kits available. So depending on when you're watching this, these may actually now be sold out, but be sure to head over to their website if you are interested in picking up one of these trams. Roundhouse models have now included Victorian Railways Gatekeepers Huts on their website in HO and N scale. These are modeled on the hut and toilet at Hampton on the Sandringham line. The Gatekeeper's Hut is $40 in HO and $30 in N scale, and the toilet by itself is $10 for HO and $6 for N. They've also said that they will soon have an O scale locomotive box for storage and transportation. Now these have only just been ordered. These will cost $105, and they're basically a double sized box with one foam cradle inside. They have five channels to each box. They are 72 mil wide, 105 mil tall, and 615 millimeters long. So keep an eye on the Roundhouse Models website for more details. News from Lyndon at Lyndon's Trains. He's told us that the N-Scale Ready to Run Genesee and Wyoming 830 class is on schedule for a release in the fourth quarter of this year. That said, there is only being 150 units produced for this run. Other upcoming N-Scale releases include the Victorian Railways CJ Cement Wagon and the BFW Car Parts Wagon. Both will be released at the Armex Cottage Traders Show in Kyneton in September. The HO BMX1 single end door will also be released. Linden has also added that Linden's Trains has purchased all stock and all production rights from Ron Albury, who produced the Owen 24 and Owen 30 Queensland Cane Train models. This range will be marketed under the Cane Train label. It includes Morton Mill four ton bins, whole stick cane trucks, bulk sugar transport wagons, and three locomotive kits. And lastly from Linden, he said that a few old kits are coming back, including the AX car transport wagon, which will be available at Kyneton as well. 
Custom Hobby Decal have let us know that they should have the final pre-release versions of artwork for their new City Decker range of decals, covering all three ranges of carriage releases with a third set for DIY numbering. At this stage, they expect them to be available from the 1st of September, 2022 via their eBay store and then their website. The patterns for Steven Johnson model six wheel supplementary tenders are now finished. They've said that the cast tarps arrived a couple of weeks ago and now the steps on the end tanks are done. The parts will now go into production for their approaching release, which they will have when they've cast them up. They've said that it's taken a while to get here, but they reckon it's gonna be worth it. And the last part of Australian model railway news, handcrafted trees by Ron. Ron has left eBay and is now selling his trees via his website. AustralianModelTrees.com And of course, don't forget to check out my own website where you've got photos that I take throughout the month as well as railway merchandise, all that goes into supporting the production of these videos. So that's all for the news and announcements. Now, let's take a look at exhibitions. In Adelaide on the 3rd of September, modelling the railways of South Australia Convention number 26 will be held at the Flinders Medical Centre Lecture Theatre's Bedford Park. On September 17 and 18th in Cowes, Phillip Island, the Phillip Island and District Railway Modellers Incorporated will hold their Model Railway Exhibition at the Cow Senior Citizens Club. The Australian Railway Modellers Manufacturing Exposition will be held in Kyneton on the 17th and 18th of September. Now this isn't an exhibition in the traditional sense, it's all about the smaller manufacturers, which means you can come along and have a chat and find out more about kit building, weathering and all the other facets of the hobby. Amra Victoria will be holding their open day on the 18th of September at the club rooms in Glen Iris from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. with permanent club layout Stonington, exhibition layout Murray, and the Garden Railway in operation. So come down and see what the club has to offer, and yes, I will be there. The Juni Roundhouse will be holding its 75th celebration, and HO scale layout Bathunga Spiral will be on display at the Juni X Services Club. On October 2nd, at the Railway Heritage Centre, West Australia, they will be holding Railfest, which aside from the one-to-one -one scale trains, there will also be a model train display, as well as a swap and sell meet. On October 7th to 9th in Goulburn, New South Wales, the 17th annual N-Scale Convention will be held. Amra Queensland will hold their open day on the 15th of October at their club rooms in Zilmere. The Hobart Model Train Show will be happening on the 15th and 16th of October at the PTYC Sports Stadium, New Norfolk. The Sunbury Model Railway Club will have its annual train exhibition on the 15th and 16th of October, the St. Anne's Church Hall, Riddles Road, Sunbury. Jeltwood Festival on the 15th and 16th of October in Millicent, South Australia. At the RSL Hall, five or six layouts will be present, including one from interstate. They've said that all the money will go to their newly formed Limestone Coast Model Railway Group. The New England Model Railway Club presents the New England Convention, 2022, held on Saturday and Sunday, the 22nd and 23rd of October at the Armadale Bowling Club. On Sunday, the 6th of November, the Railway Modellers Club of Queensland will hold a buy it, swap and sell and an open day at their club rooms in Brendale, Queensland from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. with about 50 tables of new and pre-loved items for sale and layouts from N through to G gauge will be running. The All Gages Model Railway Club in Belmont, Brisbane will be holding a big model railway sale the Karaya Model Railway Club will hold the Geelong Model Railway Exhibition on the 28th and 29th of January. On May 20th and 21st, the Latrobe Valley Model Railway Association will be holding their new exhibition at the Warragul Exhibition Hall. The 15th Australian Narrow Gauge Convention will be hosted during the Easter long weekend from April 7th to 9th in Melbourne, with a venue yet to be announced. Now, that's all for exhibition updates. If you are in a model railway club and you are having an exhibition, an open day or a buy swap sale day, let me know so I can add it to these videos. As always, I will leave all the links in the description below so you can find out more about everything that we've talked about in this episode. So once again, a huge thank you to the sponsors of Australian Model Railway News, ABR Model Works and Scale Model Supply, both offering 10% off for viewers of this channel. And of course, all the Patreons. So what are you most excited for this month? Of course, leave it in the comments below. Maybe it's going to an exhibition. Maybe you visited an exhibition last month. There was a pretty big one on, and I guess, Thank you to everyone who came up and said hello to me at the Caulfield Exhibition. It makes making these videos um, really, really worth it. And yeah, thank you all so much. That was excellent to meet you all. Yeah, anyway, I'll be back very, very soon with more Model Railway videos, news, real railways, and all that kind of good thing. So don't forget to be subscribed so you can keep up to date. Anyway, I will see you all really, really soon. Hey, Roo.